I know you were surprised when you turned a drawing, difficult drawing, upside down and you saw all sorts of things that you didn't know that were there. Like there was a fourth person. Isn't it amazing? So if we don't know what we're drawing, we actually are much better because we just register. We just observe without any judgment whatsoever. Without saying, oh, that's a tree or that's a house. I don't know that house. I don't know how to draw houses. I don't know how to draw a hand. That's all too difficult. I never knew how to draw, um, etc. I mean, ramble on and on and on. Well, as you know, I use this book of Betty Edwards, Drawing from the Right Side of the Brain, and it is truly a brain function that we are, we are really exercising. So, if you think that you can walk away and learn to draw and draw, then you're right. Because once you understand that if you see the world in an abstract shape, you can draw. The second exercise is also mind-boggling that you can do it. And we're going to look at the demonstration. I want you to follow it to the letter. And it has some similarities with the fir first exercise that we did. But this will boost your self-confidence. Keep this drawing dated as, as a witness of where you started, how you started, and what you can do. And then we go from there. So let's look at the demonstration first. I would say grab your viewfinder and then I'm going to show you how we're going to use it. The inside of the viewfinder is your template. It has the grid lines on it and you can turn it around and put it down on your sketchbook. Actually, I'm going to use another one here so you can see it better, but you have the same template inside. So we, it's real easy. I mean, we're just going to, to draw the outside and then mark the grid lines. And then we're going to connect the grid lines. And so you know that we have exactly the same measurements as the viewfinder itself. Now we're going to tone the paper. I do it very softly. You can also do it a lot harder. You want to see the grid lines though. If you lose the grid lines, just draw them again because it's a very important frame of reference, really. Um, then we smudge it. So grab a pap uh, paper towel, piece of paper towel, or another piece of paper for that matter, that's okay too. And go over the whole area. It's not the idea that we're going to make scratches, it is really that we're going to make a value. And the value is going to be your 50%, what's already there without you having to, to think about shading. Then we're going to, now we're going to smudge it, if you lose your grid lines, do it again. Draw them again as long as you can see them. Then we're going to grab the viewfinder, which is a piece of plastic basically, with a grid on it, and a dry eraser. And the dry eraser means that you can erase the lines again. Now, make something different from your hand as a posture also to hold the plastic and then close one eye. The fact that you th see something different than I see is that I'm not at the same level as the camera. So think about that I am 100% making an outline of my hand of whatever I see. If you move it and you move it too much, just do it again. See, now I move it. You want to have the outline of your hand. Don't forget to close one eye. That's very important. Now we're going to put it upside down, just like the drawing that we made before. And just like that complicated drawing, 
we're going to meticulously copy every line we see. If you make a mistake and you have to do it again, then it's not a big deal, but you just have to tone the paper again. And I want you to erase until you're 100% correct. Everything needs to be better than, than you think it is. So measure, just like we did before, measure the distance from the side of the frame on the grid line. Measure the negative shapes as far as you see them. How far is the top of that, that line to the edge of the frame. Don't start calling it names. Don't try to translate it upside down. Just draw lines. See it as abstract shapes. So I see a mistake. I'm going to go over it again and correct it. Um, yeah, do that. It might take a while. I do it pretty fast. Just because I don't want to, to you to be bored with the video, I want you to make the drawing. The video is not going to do it for you. It is the drawing itself that is going to do it. So watch, watch it and follow the instructions and take your time. Don't do anything else until I say it. So now you're looking at your hand and you're putting in all the details that you see uh, and, and make the lines a little bit bigger, adjust wherever you think you made a mistake on the viewfinder, you see it better uh, and make the lines thicker. Then you're going to erase everything around these lines. So the toning is now the 50% gray tone that you have on your hand. Don't erase everything, but everything around it. And then we're going to look at something to make the shadows come out more. And that's called hatching and cross hatching. If you don't know the term, we're going to, to look at it in more detail but before we go any further I want you to understand how to make a three-dimensional illusion of your hand not a reality but an illusion So make 10 one inch squares on a piece of paper. And I want you to have two different pencils. One is an HB and I have an eraser on the top 
and the other one is very soft it's a palomino actually but i don't know how soft they are they're very soft and they make very strong dark um, lines so here's the bar divided into 10 the first one is zero being completely blank and the last one is the 10 being completely black so blank and black then we're going to hatch and cross hatch and that is nothing more than putting lines parallel to one another very meticulously the first one we leave blank and the second one we're going to make a mark this is hatching nothing else in parallel lines next to one another now you can go darker by making the lines come closer together or you can go darker by pressing harder on the pencil you can also go darker by getting a softer pencil now this is the third hatch i'm going to go over a cross hatch i'm going to go over we actually have four different directions although you can you can have slightly different go over more and more but instead i'm going to get a softer pencil all of this is meant to give you 100 percent control over your values practice this practice this at home make as many squares as you can so you learn from the start how to make deep shadows the darkest dark and the lightest light again you can put the lines closer to one another or press harder to achieve a darker result so here you see but really we're going to the darkest dark there is which is black with only two pencils i think you can really do it with one pencil but uh, two is a little bit easier and the more confident i get in my drawing the more i press harder and the more uh, i grab two soft pencils when you begin to draw you press hard in the beginning because you want to have control and you know you don't have it but when you're learning to draw and you're getting better and you feel you're in control you now you're allowed to press really hard and make a really dark dark impression so this is what i want you to do on a regular basis if you have different materials always do that this is your control of your drawing now we're going back to the hand and do the same thing because if you can see that one side is darker and that darker side gets the hatching very subtle but remember we can go to number 10 this is probably more number six we already have number five so between five and ten we still can create depth what we do here is to create the illusion of depth and uh, this is a powerful tool so first we flatten the image by putting it on a two-dimensional plane and now we're creating the third dimension recreating the third dimension at least it's an illusion of it once you learn how to do this you basically can draw so let's practice this let's do this and um, take your time again don't rush this this is not only is relaxing it's also very intense study your own hand
with a, a small eraser, we're going to lift all the highlights. So where the lightest light hits your fingers, we're going to erase it. So now you already have a contrast between zero and at least eight or nine. You can make the darkest dark inside of your hand uh, number 10. If you dare to do it, please do so because it makes for a, 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 a realistic drawing of your hand. But remember also the number 10 is hard to erase. So you need to have confidence that that is on the right place. Good job, everybody. Good job. Great.